Hi everyone, this is going to be another video in our series on musical songs from the 60s and 70s uh, that they, uh, the name they call it is Jesus Rock. Apparently I didn't know that's the right category we're in. And this is a song that is entitled Put Your Hands in the Hands of the Man from Galilee, 1971, written by Gene McClellan. And it was first performed by a group called Ocean made famous by a cover, uh, was covered by Anne Murray from Canada. And this group was also from Canada Ocean. And it reached number two on the billboard, which means in the top 109 states, that's pretty darn good. And uh, this song's content uh, is very interesting. Uh, this is from an article at uh, countryhangdaily.com. The song's content. The song begins with the narrator reminding us to always lean on God that we should put our faith in him no matter what the circumstances are in our life. Furthermore, as he asks us to have faith in God, the narrator keeps telling us also about the man we should trust. He wants us to know that God is the one who keeps the water calm, and therefore he will also keep us calm in a stormy day. In the song, the narrator also wants us to, to look deep into and understand ourselves, because if we do that, we can understand others too. The lyric is, take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Put Your Hand in the Hand is truly an inspiring song for us to trust in God and to learn to understand others too. And here's another story uh, by Roger Duke. It was on LinkedIn and I, I don't know uh, what his background is on this, but anyway, he actually gives us some of the biblical citations that are referenced in the story. The story behind the song, he titles his article, There are various accounts in the New Testament where our Lord Jesus Christ cleansed the temple with those who were buying and selling. See Matthew 21, verses 12 to 17, Mark 11, verses 15 to 19, Luke 19 to 45 to 46, and John 2, verses 13 to 22. How about that? There's four. <laughs> there's a similar account in all four. Interesting. Uh, I had never noticed that before. This is the context in which Put Your Hand in the Hand of the Man from Galilee was set. The song was written by Gene McClellan and was one of the more popular songs of the Jesus rock movement of the 1970s. Uh, the song is written and sung in the first person and gives what seems to be a personal testimony. Janice Morgan, the lead singer for Ocean, confesses there is no difference between her and the sinners of the Bible. The lyrics recall when Jesus, who worked as a carpenter, chastised merchants for selling goods in the temple. The chorus further recalls when Jesus calmed the sea, and that's uh, Matthew 8, verse 23 to 27, Mark 4, verses 35 to 41, and Luke 8, verses 22 to 25. During a storm that threatened to overturn the boat, the panicked apostles woke Jesus and begged him for help. Jesus did not see what all the fuss was about and simply commanded the waves to be still. He asked his disciples, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Ocean was not a gospel group uh, per se and did not feel a strong connection to the religious aspect of the song. It's always kind of funny how people <laughs> have a big hit and uh, it's just somehow given to them as gift. And, and then, you know, uh, they have to learn to appreciate it kind of later. According to Greg Brown, they were hesitant to even release the single. We were concerned that it might give the group a gospel image. Well, I guess it might have <laughs> had that effect. He explained in the book, Axes, Chops, and Hot Licks. They were right. The group was typecast as a gospel rock band thanks to their Jesus-themed debut hit. There were various other artists who recorded this song in the Jesus Rock Top 40 category. This song was recorded by Ann Murray. We already mentioned her. Johnny Cash. Elvis Presley, Joan Baez, Frankie Lane, among others, each recorded in their own, hold on, in their own inimitable way and put their stamp on it. But the most recognizable recording was Ocean's Put Your Hand in the Hand. And actually, I'm going to play that for you. They did it live on a television show, and that's been recorded. And um, so there's some much better effect, I think, see, seeing it performed live and also the way they back, they, they use the vocals of male and female just perfectly in the middle of the song. So I think you'll appreciate that. So I'm going to play that now and I'll come back and kind of show you cover the, a couple of other versions of this. And this uh, video uh, with the band actually playing is also with titles over it. So you can hear the words 
And there's some words I don't understand the meaning of. So we'll maybe go over that and just conjecture a little bit about what they could mean. All right, so get ready for the, uh, the song. Okay, I just want to make a short comment here is that I think there is a point in the story that you can kind of see an underlying theme. Um, he's talking about, it's, a, it's obviously Gene is a man, and he's talking about be, there's buyers and sellers, but we're no different fellers than those who were selling, uh, you know, the goods inside the temple. So it's something about selling goods inside the temple maybe he's a songwriter maybe he does want to do gospel type songs but he feels like that's not a good way to make money but he needs to make money maybe doing that um and then uh he says here this is the the words i don't exactly understand there'll come a time well his mom's going to say there'll come a time where there'll probably be room in heaven i think i can get that but then it says, but I'm feeling kind of guilty about the number of times to do what we must do. So let's say it's doing these performances on a song that's a spiritual song and he's making money on it. And he's feeling uncomfortable selling these type of songs to make money off of, in other words. Um, but we forget what he said. And then we figure that he'll still make room. So then we, we instead of deciding we're just going to do it without uh doing it right and instead of obeying we're going to forget what he said and then we'll figure he'll still make room for us and so this is uh the dilemma that you put yourself in sometimes where you are literally under pressure to do something that you don't think he wants you to do but you do it anyway 
and that's not a good thing. So uh, anyway, I think that's part of what's going on in the song, and there's a tension for the writer. So it's it's a very realistic uh, kind of a uh, an issue that have all kinds of people can feel in different walks of life. You know, a, a lot of people in their jobs feel pressured to go along with things that are not right, or uh, you know, people aren't ethical above them or around them, and so they feel compromised, you know, by being in that situation. So they don't like it. So uh, it could be all kinds of things that people can relate to this song that they they are not following the master and they, they're being told to put their hands in the hands of the master and trust him, despite the uh, feel, the pressure to do what we we're not doing what we want to do. We're feeling guilty about the number of times to do what we what we must do that we don't really want to do. So it sounds like having a job you really don't want to do because of the moral implications of that job. Okay, so I think I think that explains the song, but I'm not exactly sure. But now uh, I'm going to send this out. We'll listen to a little of Anne Murray doing a, a cover of the song, and then we're going to listen to Johnny Cash uh, do the song. Uh, I kind of like the Johnny Cash version too because. It also shows the young people today what a different time it was when you could have a TV network show where a spiritual song would be sung by all the people who were in that variety show. And you'll see that in this episode. And it just kind of reminds you what what a world of difference today. You, you Not only would you never have this happen anymore, it's just a, such a shame. You, you can't celebrate any spiritual uh, truths in, in, in modern art. You, it all has to be celebrating uh, things that are not uh, not in any way gl- giving glory to God giving it's giving glory to man men men or or that kind of thing instead of giving glory to God it's all about us so anyway uh, let's uh, listen to we'll hear Anne Murray first famous Canadian singer at the time 1970s and uh, and she had not on an album. She she did not release it as a single. She did not have the right to do that. So the single was by this group, and they got that very high ranking. Okay, so God bless. Hope hope you enjoy all this, and and uh, I'll sign off, and it'll end after the Johnny Cash song. Ciao. Okay, hold the presses. I found a very interesting trivia question. Did Anne Murray change the song that she was given the song? to do after them and she's changed the lyrics exactly at the point i had that question mark about what did he mean it seemed kind of unusual in the song this is how ann murray changes it she says my mama taught me how to pray before i reached the age of seven and when i am down on my knees that's when i am close to heaven that's new changed he lived his life with two kids and a wife you do what you must do but he showed me what it takes to get you through So now it's somehow a parent is exemplifying. It's like a father trying to take care of the the wife and kids and the dad had to do the job, you know, regardless. And, and he had to do what he had to do. So very interesting. Here's the comparison side by side. You can see a different picture than uh, how different the picture is now. So before it said, there will come a time when there'll probably be room in heaven. And I think actually the verse is very much, much better in Anne Murray's version. When I am down on my knees, that's when I am close to heaven. So it's that oxymoron. You're going down on your knees. Now you're actually closer to heaven. Okay, so here uh, the change is that it's no longer says, uh, but I'm kind of feeling guilty about the number of times to do what we must do. It says, daddy lived his life with two kids and a wife. You do what you must do, okay? So it, there, there is a little of that, but this is talking about the dad now had to do what he had to do, but he showed me enough of what it takes to get you through. So he learned from his dad how to navigate, hopefully properly through this maze of life where you have all these pressures on you. And then they got rid of the uh, last line altogether, but we forget what he said, then we figure out, we figure that he'll still make room. So... Yeah, the spiritual message message is toned down a little bit there, and there could have been a lot more, I think, helpful there uh, about how you get through, how you trust Jesus to get you through and navigate around bad things that are happening in your workplace. It sounds like that's what we're talking about. Okay, anyway, uh, let's uh, now get back to the clip so you can hear it. I'm going to let you hear the clip short just this part, and then we'll play her full, the Anne Marie thing. It's two and a half minutes. Your hand in the hand of the man from a Galilee. Mama taught me how to pray before I reach the age of seven. seven. And when I'm down on my knees, 
you're down and out and you think nobody cares well there ain't nobody that cares there's always someone someone will take your hand if you reach up you'll be a bridge over deep water for you you'll be a strong arm to the sick you'll be a leaning post to any man big or little what I'm trying to say is here's another lick for number one Put your hand in the hand of the man that steals the waters. Put your hand in the hand of the man that calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Every time I look into the holy book, I tremble. When I read about the part where the carpenter cleans the temple For oh, the buyers and the sellers are no different fellas than what I profess to be But it causes me shame to know I'm not the gal that I should be Put your hand in the hand of the man who spilled the water Told me how to pray before I reach the age of seven And when I'm down on my knees That's when I'm closest to heaven Daddy lived his life with two kids and a wife To do what he must do But he showed me enough of what it takes To get you through mm -hmm. Put your hands in the hand of the man Put your hand in the hand of the man who 
Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand. Yeah.